Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina and I make videos about living in my tiny house on wheels and living a more intentional life. Today I am very obviously not at the tiny house. I am in a culet um, on the south side of Vancouver Island at a resort called Black Rock Oceanfront Resort. I'm here for a work function, which is pretty damn awesome because it is gorgeous here. It's raining. It was actually storming today. Um, so the, <laughs> the weather has actually cleared up. Um, still cloudy. It's still going to rain again, but it's stopped raining for now. So I'm going to enjoy this and go for a walk and see what I can find. Oh wow, <laughs> this is incredible, my goodness, just look at that. So recently, one of my favorite YouTubers on the island here, Derek from Simnet Nutrition, did a video uh, of his five rules that he lives by. And I thought this would be the perfect place for me to share the five rules that I live by. Obviously, there's other philosophies that I have that I live by, but these are the five main ones that I live by and I wanted to share with you. Number one. Um, I have moved from a place, how do I put this? I used to move through the world with a mindset of scarcity. When something would happen, when an opportunity was presented, I just defaulted to the, well, I can't do that. Something's going to go wrong. Um, there's no way that could happen. There's never enough. Um, and basically, like I said, a mindset of scarcity. And what that meant was I was always afraid and I never let myself, uh, believe that things would happen. And it was, uh, because I had been through so many difficult things in my life that just sort of, that became my default, right? To be extra careful. I'm a very cautious person by nature and... Um, given everything that had happened to me, you know, my past, um, the difficult things, I was, you know, rightly so, I think, in a lot of ways, the type of person who would play it safe. And what I had to learn to do, and I credit my old boss, uh, who is still a good friend and a wonderful mentor, Robert, um, with changing my mindset, because Robert moved through the world from a place of abundance. There was always going to be more opportunities. Things were going to work out. Uh, he just, he just did. And for five years of working with them, <laughs> he just kept saying, Adelina, you got to get that scarcity mindset out. You've got to change it. You'll never, things will never start working out for you. You'll never start making things happen until you can change your mindset. And so I started to do that. Um, and that was a slow process. It took years and it's still a work in progress, right? Um, but every time that um, there would be an opportunity or every time I, you know, had a dream, um, I would feel that fear and that anxiety and that, and that urge to default to safety and scarcity. And I would tell myself over and over again that there's no reason why this can't work out, that I can do it, that there's more than enough, that, um, uh, you know, I'm not going to lose my job, I'm not going to be a bag lady out on the street, that things will work out. And again, it was a process that took years, 
but now that's how I move through the world. Everything's possible. And um, there's nothing I can't do. Um, and yes, things will be hard and I will not always succeed at everything. But I, I always approach things from the absolute faith that, yeah, it'll all work out. And you know what? In general, almost always, it does because if you come from think to if you come to things from the mindset of scarcity and fear you generate more scarcity and fear and uh, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and I know that I'm simplifying and that there are obviously people in situations and situations in general that that's not going to apply to but in general if you can switch your mindset like I switch my mindset things start to happen and it's it's one of my number one philosophies and rules that uh, for life and how I move through the world and really what I try and teach my kids is that you have to with your mindset of abundance and possibility in order for things to actually be abundant and possible. Number two, just because you've never done it before doesn't mean you can't do it. That's a big one. Um, because most of us have dreams that we never attempt um, because we don't know how we're going to do them. Uh, and so we just stop. Instead of learning how, trying out, making mistakes, trial and error, and, getting, and then getting to where we want to to be doing what we want to do. You know, we're so much more capable than we give ourselves credit for, so much more. And that was another big thing for me, the fear of not knowing what I'm doing uh, and failing was uh, a huge thing holding me back. Um, and my philosophy is if one person has done it before, if it has been done at least once before, that means it's possible which means you can do it too, if you want to, obviously given certain circumstances, health, ability, financial situation, that sort of thing. But my point is, like when I put that heat tape on last uh, weekend, and I said this during that video, just because you haven't done it before, doesn't mean you can't do it. If you want to do something, you can learn how to do it. You can at least try it. And then at least you've tried it and there is this huge amount of satisfaction in doing that. The first time you try something you've never done before and were afraid to try and you do it, it doesn't matter if it's perfect, but you do it, you get this incredible amount of confidence that you'll be able to do the next thing and then the next thing. And it's true. So that's number two. Just because you haven't done it before doesn't mean you can't do it. Number three, a wish without a plan is just a dream. In order to, for things to be real, in order for things to happen, you have to have a plan. And it can be a long-term plan, but it needs to be broken down into smaller, short-term, manageable chunks. Um, and so it doesn't matter how far out that plan could be. You need to have some sort of action that you're doing on an ongoing basis that's getting you closer to it so when I was when I first dreamed about having a tiny house on wheels I had no idea how I was gonna make that happen my both kids were still at home I couldn't afford it my job situation was a little iffy all of those things but what I decided to do was make a plan and make and be doing uh, taking steps every day or week or month uh, towards that and s for the longest time it was just watching videos bookmarking them uh, websites printing out pictures doing little hand 
floor plan sketches, things like that, researching products and builders, things like that over the years before I was able to actually do something as concrete as put a deposit down or even go interview a builder. But because I had a plan, there was movement. And because I had committed to doing something every week, every month, uh, no matter how small it was, to get me closer to that plan, uh, to that dream, to that goal, I saw movement and I felt like it was real. And so I really do think that's important. A goal without a plan is just a dream. There's nothing wrong with dreams. But if you want that something to actually come to fruition, then you're going to need to make a plan and you're going to need to commit to steps of some size as you're going along. Number four uh, rule that I live my life by is start now. Don't wait. Don't wait for the perfect time, for the perfect situation, financial, family, whatever. Don't wait because, um, and don't think that it's too late. Because the thing is, you might think, ah, oh, if I go back to school now, I'm going to be... 50, 60, whatever, by the time I'm done. Well, the fact is, those four years are going to pass no matter what. What's going to happen is, four years from now, you're going to be looking back to four years ago and thinking, oh my God, I wish I had started four years ago. So don't wait. Start now. There's, never this, there's no such thing as a perfect time. You just have to get started. start to rain again so I'll make this last one uh, fast number five treat people with kindness because you really don't know what's happening in their world and most people are doing the best they can with what they have available emotionally physically financially um, and sometimes their best might not be an what we want it might not be enough for us but it's the best they can do. And when you realize that, um, it really helps you let go of uh, anger and uh, resentment that can build up when you expect people to be the person that you want them to be. And they're literally not able to be that person because of what's happening with them emotionally, mentally, physically. Also, in little ways, like in traffic, Right, the person that driving slowly, I mean, this, th that, that could be your grandpa or your grandma or your mom. And you wouldn't want somebody yelling at them, honking at them, giving them the finger. And you don't know what's happened to them. They might have just left somebody in the hospital. They might have just lost their dog. They, you don't know. And when you react in anger by default, uh, it just brings anger and negativity into your world and that be and you become an angry person treat people with kindness um, and make that your default Accept that people are doing the best they can most people are doing the best they can with what they have available to them and uh, that you don't often get to know the a person's whole story and so you don't really understand what they're going through. This world has a lot of negativity in it, especially the last few years. And treating people with kindness, putting more kindness out into this world will bring more kindness to you. I firmly believe that. I firmly believe that. Um, and it doesn't cost you anything to be kind. So guys, that's my video of the five rules that I live my life by. I hope you found it useful. Uh, maybe some of those things are things you already do. Maybe some of those things you'll never want to do. But I really liked Derek's video. 
I thought it was so useful. His was um, because his channel is health and uh, veganism, plant-based eating, uh, wellness, fitness related. His five rules were related to that and they were um, really amazing. And I'll link his video down below. The one that really stuck with me uh, was he said something in his video and he, what he said was, we are all athletes. That blew my mind because I've never thought of myself as an athlete. If you know me in person, I'm not a very coordinated person. Uh, but that really stuck with me and has made me really rethink um, my health and fitness and prompted me to start making some changes. So I hope you find that useful. Um, again, from Black Rock Resort in Euclid, <laughs> British Columbia. I have a hard time saying that name, uh, but it is gorgeous here. The south side of the island is the side that faces Japan and the Pacific Ocean. And so it tends to be a little wilder, a little rougher, especially in storms than the north side where I am, because that's um, faces the mainland. So there's just something so incredible about the wildness of this coastline especially on a day like today when it's storming so i hope you guys are doing well i hope you're staying safe i love you remember in a world where you can be anything be kind because we all need more kindness